Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I will be going through the part two of the platformer tricks. I will pick up right where we left from the input buffer. So let's get started. Trick number four, Coyote time. If I have to rank all the tricks on this list, this will be the number one. This is in my opinion, the single most important trick to put into any platformer. Coyote time is when you allow the player to perform an action that should have been performed a few moments before. For example, when the player wants to perform a last moment jump, but he walks off the platform just a few frames before hitting the jump button. In this case, you want to give a little window to the player so he can press the button and we allow him to jump even though there is no ground under him. This adds a bit of forgiveness to the game, and games like Celeste, for example, makes use of this technique. There are different ways to implement this in a platformer. You can, for example, delay the gravity or the small window you give the player, like in the cartoons. Or you can simply apply the gravity as usual, but allow the action to perform anyways. Here's how I usually implement this. Let's head over to the fall. Actually, first, let's take a look what happens when we walk off the cliff and try to jump. So right now, we just fall. It feels unresponsive. Heading to the fall state here on our finite state machine, let's set a timer to the fall state. Let's call this timer Coyote Timer. Let's make it one shot and 0.1 seconds, roughly six frames. And let's get a reference for this node in the fall state. So let's make on ready bar and let's call it Coyote Timer. And let's get a reference to the Coyote Timer that we just created. Now, the tricky part here is deciding when to use this timer. When we want to start this timer, we want to start this timer every time we work around it the frame before. For example, we are going to run off the cliff, so we are going from running to fall. Or we are stationary and the ground vanishes. And in this case, we could be going from idle to fall. In those cases, we want to trigger the Coyote Timer. We don't want to trigger the Coyote Timer when we are jumping and we start falling. In this case, you don't want that. Otherwise, we would give the player infinite jumps. Hey, let's take a look. If I go here and say Coyote Timer at start every time that we enter without checking the previous state. And here in the physics update, after we move, we're going to say if Coyote Timer is stopped, let's say not stopped. And let's take a look at the method that we have here is get jump input. And object get jump input, change the state to jump. Let's put this on an else if. And now, if you head over to here, so as you can see, we can jump even that we are off the platform, and then we can continue jumping as you saw if you leave the jump state into the fall state and we keep pressing jump really fast we don't want that so right here let's use previous state in the finite state machine to decide when to trigger the timer let's make if finite state machine that previous state is different than jump we want to trigger the coyote timer
and like this as you can see here we went run to fall and fall to jump and if i spend the jump i cannot jump after i start falling from the jump perfect so now the game feels more responsive let's head over to the trick number five that is jump curves there is a gdc talk on this subject that explains a lot how jump curves can add personality to your character i will put a link for this in the description feel free to check it out the way i like to think about jump curve is that it represents the time the character spends in the air while jumping i like to split this curve in two parts the jump part and the fall part of the curve and depending how you tweak each part you get a different result for example if you shorten the jump part of the curve the character will reach the top of the jump or the peak faster and if you stretch that part of the curve the character will reach peak of the jump slower it can give the player this snappy or floaty jump phase and the same goes to the fall if you do this for the fall you either get a heavier feeling or a lighter feeling for the player there are different ways to implement this and you can go crazy on physics doing some sort of calculation but i like to keep it simple to control the curve i usually go with two constants for gravity one for jumping and another one for falling it's to say one for jumping and another gravity for anything else and i also like to have a terminal velocity to limit the fall speed because right now let me uncomment this line right here and i will show you right now if we go here and we start falling you will see that we are going to reach a crazy speed like 576 that's too much we, we should not be reaching this kind of speed at most 180 200 it's a good value it's it depends on the game but usually pixel art games 180 to 200 is the perfect value so let's change this let's reduce the gravity to 900 and let's add a fall gravity here And let's give it 450 half and you can see the the value plays out and let's add the terminal velocity as well and let's give it a terminal velocity of 180 as i was saying now here when we apply the gravity you can see here that we are not limiting the amount of speed we can get here we're just adding the value right let's change this let's do as we do for the x so we're gonna say move towards and you're gonna say velocity dot y and we want to move this variable velocity y to the terminal velocity and then we want to define which gravity we're going to be using right as i said we want to use gravity if the current state is jump for everything else we want to use the fall gravity and you want to multiply this by delta and there we go you head to the game right now you see that the character goes up in the jump phase and it comes down on a different velocity much slower than than before and if you jump from here, you can see that the player falls really slowly towards the ground. And this gives control to the player. All right. That's it for the jump curve. You can play around with the values and try to find something that fits your, your game. Now, trick number six, jump modifiers. This concept refers to any modifier 
you can apply during the jump phase but this is not limited to jumps you can do this with other states but jump is the most common that's why i call them jump modifiers so these modifiers are meant to give the player some sort of a boost or extra control over the character for example if you reduce the horizontal acceleration of the player while in the air you can help the player nail that landing if you have for, for example two spikes and a place for the player to stand in between those spikes if you do this kind of trick you can help the player to nail the landing in between the spikes or you can also add some horizontal boost when the player jumps to increase the reach of the jump or to just incentivize the player to jump like crazy i'm going to be applying these two concepts and i'm going to show you how to do it and you can do much more things with this concept but i like to keep it simple for the video so let me show you how we can do this too for the first one let's define a constant here and let's call it air multiplier and let's give it a value of 65 right 0.65 or even better let's put half right so whenever we're in the air the acceleration of a thousand is going to be 500 now here on the velocity y we want to do more or less the same thing we did for the gravity but for the for multiplying the acceleration so we are going to say right here say one if we are on floor else air multiplier and then we are going to multiply this by the acceleration that is then multiplied by delta so we are modifying the acceleration based on the state that we are grounded or not so this could already feel while in the air yeah you can see that changing directions it's a bit difficult in the air but this helps the player control the landing as you can see here i can nail the landing anywhere i want now to give the player the horizontal boost i was talking about to either increase the reach or incentivize the player to jump like crazy like that's why they do this in celeste because celeste has this boost that every time you jump and you are pressing the forward key you are going to gain an extra velocity on on that direction i usually do this in the enter jump whenever we apply the velocity y we are also be going to applying here some boost to the x we're going to do a plus equals and not setting the velocity directly because we want to increment our current velocity and let's just say that it's going to be clear but max speed and we're going to multiply this by the input x so whatever the direction the player is holding the joystick and you will be able to see this here in the player velocity because right now the top velocity that we can reach is 90 but when we jump for a brief moment we are going to be over 90 or maybe five or six frames and we are going to see this here on this console so whenever we jump we get over and we get over and i think that's it for the video thanks for watching and i see you guys in the next one bye